Hi guys, Mr. Reese here again for his little old art club. I think we're on week five. This is probably the last week. So it's the last chance to really be super creative with some of my ideas. Now, the challenge this week, or the theme and the challenge, is based on an art movement called Surrealism. Most of you will probably know about it. Uh, surrealism is based on dreams and nightmares. So if you really wanted to get into it, you could go to sleep, take a pen and a pad with you. If you have a nightmare in the middle of the night, wake up, you write it down. Whatever the dream is, you write it down. And this is what Salvador Dali used to do, is in the morning, he'd take his pad and he'd go down into his studio and that would be the inspiration for his painting. Okay, but we're, we're gonna do it slight, slightly differently. Uh, because I'm going to show you some uh, surrealist artwork to give you some ideas. You don't have to follow it exactly. You know, you can change it to suit your own needs. Uh, but the, I've decided to give you some categories. And these are the categories here. We've got animals and musical instruments. We've got fruit and people, or it could be food and people. We've got eyes and skies. We've got creepy creatures and mythical monsters okay and then i've got another artist on the end as a bonus there's a chap called wasley kandinsky uh, and he's an abstract expressionist so i'll show you his work so if you'd like just to come over here now you can have a look at some of these images we'll start up in the top left we've got max Ernest. i think this is one of the classic creepy creatures which inspired me to get some ideas for that Working way along now, we've got um, an Italian chap called De Chirico. De Chirico was renowned for his big shadows. And in this one, he's got a statue or a bust and it's got loads of bananas in it. And so, let's just move on to the next one. We've got Magritte. This is a very interesting one. It's almost like an apple has fallen off the tree and somebody's taken a picture as the apple just happens to be right in front of his face. But that is a classic surrealist image. Now we've got another one of René Magritte's work here. This will be quite popular, I think, where you can you could start here if you get stuck with ideas. A giant eye, anything could go in that eye. And that's why we've used the theme of eyes and skies. But anything could actually go in this area here. It doesn't have to be a sky. You could bring your own image in. So this, I've used this artist here, I just got a print out of it, I, I'm not even sure who the artist is, but I quite liked it. A pair of scissors with two figures dancing and lots of stuff cut up. Now over here, this is where it's slightly different. Those who are mathematicians, a bit square on time, those who are mathematicians and like to play with say rulers and set squares and compasses, you can do. And this is your opportunity to just come up with lots of different shapes, make it up, overlap them, and obviously colour them in. Now moving along, that's Wosley Kandinsky. This is back to Magritte again. This is such a weird one. Two people obviously kissing, but there's. it looks almost like they, they've got a sheet of cloth over them, but it's almost like it could be made of marble. Very interesting. Next one along, so here's Magritte again. He's He's... Normally, people, when people think of surrealism, they think of Salvador Dali, but Magritte, I've got a lot of his work in here just by chance. Instead of an apple in front of his face, this time a dove seems to be just flying by at the time somebody's pressed that shutter. Now, one of the fathers of surrealism was this chap, Salvador Dali. Uh, he's a bit of a character. He's renowned for his melting clocks. If you ever go to an exhibition, you see melting clocks, you're pretty sure it's going to be Salvador Dali, but this is a weird one. It's probably not the best picture, to be honest with you. There's more landscape in the back, but we've unfortunately could enlarge it too much. This is actually a diving board, and the idea was that you go down the diving board, you bounce on it, and up and out you go. Instead of going into the swimming pool, you go into this wild imagination, and here you've got uh, little um, insects crawling on watches and weird weird duck things here which is i don't even know what they are to be honest with you but quite strange here's a classic one another magritte this is where i've said to you why not have a go with um animals and musical instruments i think that's a trombone could be wrong so it's an elephant 
You can imagine the noise that comes out of an elephant and probably one of the reasons why he's put the trombone on there. And as you can see in the background, there's an earthquake going on as well and animals in the foreground. So here you've got the foreground with animals and trumpets and cymbals and different instruments along with animals. That's the foreground. The middle ground may be the pelican. Are they pelicans? Are they pelicans, Kate, would you say? Yeah, and, and then in the background you've got more elephants and then in the, the farthest point you've got this earthquake. So you've got various layers, a foreground, a middle ground and a background. That's very important to think about that. So again, we've got Kandinsky, that's for the mathematicians. And the thing is about Kandinsky, he wasn't just a mathematician, he was also a musician, but above all, he was an artist. So he related musical notes to colours. And obviously, you can see the geometry coming into the work there. Here we go back to Salvador Dali again. Really, really interesting. You've got elephants with long spindly legs that would, ho would hardly hold their weight, and horses as well. And then look at the tiny little people at the bottom. That gives you a sense of scale of how big these things are meant to be. So back over to the next one, which is De Chirico, the Italian chap. Again, look, De Chirico, he's got mega shadows coming in. Quite, quite spooky, very different to a lot of the other work. Usually quite dark. Is it sunrise? Is it sunset? It's, it's got moody, atmospheric colors to it. And of course, in the middle here, you've got a sculpture of a reclining figure. A few wacky clouds in the sky. So here's a classic Salvador Dali. There's the boat. Instead of a set of sails, lots of butterflies. So if maybe we could try and combine, try and get a boat and put something in the boat which would represent the sail. And there's a sensation of wind blowing through this, as we can tell by looking at the clouds up here. Something's blowing or is a jet of air coming through. Hopefully warm air. And then you've got the figures on in the foreground again. So there's your foreground, there's your middle ground, and the clouds in the, in the far distance is the background. So that's something to think about. Now, here we've got a classic. We've got this picture in the art room. This 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 is it's like a it's like a bedroom or a front room, and the wallpaper is made up of clouds and in the foreground you've got a matchstick but you've also got this wine glass type thing and and this is i believe is a pin cushion for putting your pins in but then weirdly the, the double bed which you'd expect to be the biggest thing is, is quite small uh but it's made to look small because next to it is a comb and they and he's made the comb giant size so if you were to take the comb out it would be a little it would seem a little bit more normal but because he's put a giant comb in there there's a nice contrast between something massive and something small well they should be the other way around shouldn't they the comb should be smaller than the bed but he's deliberately done that then he's got a mirror in here you've got reflections in the mirror you can actually see an outside world that you can't see when you first look at the picture only through looking at the mirror and i think that is a shaver. I think that's a, a brush for, for foaming up and, and, and for, for gents to get their beards sorted out. I could probably do one of them actually. So uh, there we have it. I think you've got a whole range of artists from Max Ernest to De Chirico to Magritte to Salvador Dali. And finally, the abstract expressionist here with geometry, maths and music. Wozley Kandinsky, Russian chap, really talented. So what I'm going to do in a minute now is I've actually got a couple of magazines. I've literally just chopped a few images out. And this is, this is just one way of getting started. Some of you will say, I just want to use my own imagination. I just want to go and, and just make it all up. And, and that's absolutely fine. But if you're kind of struggling a little bit, this is a very good way of getting started. So just cut images out of newspapers or old magazines. And then it is just simply a case of arranging them on your sheet of paper. I've got some prick stick to stick them down. And it's up to you how you arrange them. So I'm going to do that in just a minute. 